Hi class, welcome to the online session. We are going to discuss today the white blood cell pathology. Uh, we have slide uh, we have slide 67, reactive hyperplasia of the tonsil. Then we have slide 71, follicular hyperplasia. Slide 50, sinusistocytosis and 93, plasma cytoma. So let us start with 67. This is follicular hyperplasia of the tonsil. Uh, first thing that you have to differentiate with is does uh, does this belong to the lymph node or from the tonsil? Because when we are talking about the tonsil, uh, you would be talking about the presence of lymphoid tissue in the oral cavity. So one way to uh, one way to identify for the presence of the tonsillar tissue is uh, identifying for oral cavity structures. Like for this one, you have the presence of mucus acini. Okay. Uh, also, you can uh, identify for the presence of the lining epithelium. Okay. You can see the presence of the stratified squamous epithelium in the slide. So, uh, plus the mucus acini, then you are sure that this one is from the tonsil. So, next is reactive hyperplasia of the tonsil. So, lymphoid tissues uh, residing in the oral cavity would be uh, the tonsils. And uh, the lymphoid tissues here would be similar to the lymphoid tissues that we would appreciate in the lymph node. It means that it would also possess the presence of follicles. <clears throat> and if you remember histology, there are two forms of, of, um, of follicles. It can either be a fol uh, primary or secondary follicle. A primary follicle means that there is absence of the germinal center. Okay, so you would see the presence of a follicle, but you do not see a germinal center. This is an inactive form of follicle. This is primary. Whereas, if you are going to look at a follicle and you would see the presence of a germinal center, uh, this, uh, and then it is surrounded by uh, the presence of small, small resting uh, naive sets of lymphocytes this is what they call as the mantle zone so you have a secondary follicle consisting of a uh, germinal center surrounded by the presence of mantle zone okay, here's another one okay so this is another secondary follicle uh, in this particular uh, in this particular follicle, you would be able to identify the presence of the mantle zone. In this case, you have the presence of uh, tangible body macrophages. Okay, let us try to look at them at a high power magnification. Okay, so these are tangible body macrophages. Okay? Usually, they would eat up. Uh, the fragments of dead uh, lymphocytes or dead cells within the uh, within the area. So these are what we call as the tangible body macrophages, and they are identified by having abundant cytoplasm. Okay, um, and then if you are going to look at this particular follicle, okay, there's one thing that you would notice. Here's a darker area. And then on this portion is a lighter area. So these are what we call as the dark and light zones of the germinal center. Dark zones referring to the presence of the centroblasts. The lighter zones referring to the centrocytes. Okay. So if you have the presence of dark and light zones, presence of tangible body macrophages with in the germinal center and surrounded by this macro uh, this mantle zone then think of a benign condition okay so this is reactive hyperplasia of the tonsil so and 
Another thing to look for with regards to being a, a benign condition or inflammatory condition would be the variation in the appearance of the follicle. Okay? So, you have variation in the appearance of the follicle. Okay? So, next we go to slide... Um, slide 71. Slide 71 is follicular hyperplasia. Uh, this particular slide has a um, not so good staining quality. Okay, so I'm going to lower down or decrease the uh, the, the the brightness. Okay, so follicular hyperplasia is identified by the presence of follicles. Okay. And uh, the follicles would mean that they can go into the uh, into the lower portion. If you remember in uh, in the lymph node, there are two regions: the cortex and the medulla. So sometimes you would see the presence of the follicles going into the uh, lower region. Okay. So, one thing that would help us differentiate it from the malignant counterpart, which is the follicular lymphoma, is the appreciation of a separation between the germinal center and the mantle zone. Okay? So, the mantle zone is very important because always remember, with regards to lymphomas, it means that there's a monoclonal proliferation. So usually it would be a proliferation of a single uh, lineage like for example the centrocytes, the central blast or those in the resting zone. Okay so, so you can see here there's a germinal center, germinal center, very distinct, very distinct mantle zone layer. So uh, this is what you call as follicular hyperplasia. Okay? So, with regards to follicular hyperplasia, um, the things that we would see in, uh, in reactive hyperplasia would more or less be the same. You have the presence of follicles that, have the, that would possess the germinal centers. Uh, you can see presence of, of tangible body macrophages, although in this case, not so. What is more important here is the identification of the mantle zone. Okay. So this is uh, this is follicular hyperplasia. Follicular hyperplasia. This is a reaction towards a humoral immune response. So it's uh, the the cells that would proliferate here are the B cells, the B lymphocytes, and. They can be associated with toxoplasmosis, with viral infections, or even with rheumatoid arthritis. Okay? So next slide, we have slide 50. So slide 50 is sinusistiocytosis. Okay? So sinusistiocytosis is uh, another uh, reactive condition wherein the medullary portion would be expanded. Uh, so the cortex would show the presence of the follicles. The medullary portion would show the presence of the sinuses or the sinusoids. Okay? So these are sinusoids. These this, uh, this areas are what we call as sinusoids. Okay. So the sinusoids here are filled with a lot of cells. These are macrophages or histiocytes and then you have here the medullary cords which would be composed of lymphocytes. So there would be expansion or distension of the medullary sinuses here and sometimes you would see this one in, um, in breast cancers, in colonic uh, colonic cancer, although they are non-specific, but sometimes you would see them uh, being uh, identified in the specimen. So again, if you see expanded 
medullary sinuses with the medullary cords present. This is sinus histiocytosis. Okay? Remember the spelling. Okay? And then lastly, we have slide 93. This is plasma cytoma. Okay? So for plasma cytoma, this is a plasma cell disorder characterized by proliferation of plasma cell or B cell disorder uh, with proliferation of uh, plasma cells that are neoplastic. Okay, so plasma cells that are neoplastic. So, uh, there would be the uh, an increase in a monoclonal immunoglobulin. The monoclonal immunoglobulin here would be called the M component and it can be uh, IgG, IgA, those are the most common, but the IgM, DE, uh, DEM can also be involved. But the most common would be immunoglobulin G and A. And it's associated with excessive light chain uh, secretion, wherein there would be, uh, there are two, two light chains. We have the kappa and the lambda. And usually there would be an increase in the kappa chain and a decrease in the lambda chain. Okay? Increase in kappa chain, decrease in the lambda chain. Uh, when you say plasma cytoma, it's, it means that there's only one mass present. If you have a uh, multiple masses in the soft tissue or in the bone, we call it as multiple myeloma. Uh, the bone lesion is lytic. Okay? And uh, usually there is a rearrangement of in, uh, the, in, uh, the IgH locus in the chromosome. The... Uh, neoplastic cells would release uh, interleukin-6 mediators that would be important for their survival. Uh, for the x-ray, the important finding for the x-ray is the presence of uh, punched out defects. So these are rounded masses. If we get a gross uh, specimen, usually they are gelatinous and brown and soft. So histologically, very important, what we would see would be the proliferation of plasma cells. The plasma cells would possess round dark nuclei and then it is eccentrically located with a pink cytoplasm. Okay? And they would also present with uh, globular inclusions found in the nucleus or in the cytoplasm. So these are examples of the nuclear inclusions with you would see the presence of nuclear inclusions and these are what we call as Dutcher Dutcher bodies if they are located outside okay let's try to see if there's a usually we have the Dutcher bodies here okay so if it's located uh, in the cytoplasm then we call it as Russell okay we call it as Russell body so this is very typical of the plasma cell, eccentrically located uh, nucleus in abundant cytoplasm. So I, uh, I think I saw. It. So I think this one is a Russell body. Okay, Russell body. It means that there is the it pushes the nucleus to the periphery. Okay, so it's not found within the nucleus. It is found adjacent to it. So this is. Okay, you can can you see it? That would be a an inclusion. So this is what you call as a Russell body. But if it is it with it, it is found within the nucleus, it is called Dutcher. Okay, tumor marker that we use for plasma cell uh, disorder would be CD138 and CD56. Okay, so those are the slides that we have for today's session uh, so thank you and good night